Hey guys, Andrew here from IGN. I'm with Josh Jeffco from Gearbox. How are you doing, Josh? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, we are looking at the final DLC for Borderlands 2. This is the end. It's a long time coming. <laughs> I think it's just going to hit a, exactly a year and a half, which is really impressive. Um, so this is the last of the Headhunter packs. Yeah, this is number five. And what's this one called? Uh, this one is Sir Hammerlock versus the Son of Cromorax. Okay, and that's exciting. Cromorax, we know from uh, the General Knox DLC, Borderlands 1. Yeah, from Borderlands 1, yeah. He was the, uh, the raid boss. The secret raid boss at the end of that DLC. That's enticing. Uh, that, that gives me some kind of hint of what we might see here. Yeah. And uh, so, of course, these are always holiday themed. We got Thanksgiving, we got Christmas, we got Halloween, uh, we had Valentine's Day. And now, this isn't making me think Easter. Like, what, what are we... Uh... Um, it, it may not be the most Easter. Uh, we got a, there's a lot of, you know, bright pastel colors. You'll see a lot of, of Easter in the color palette. But uh, we wanted to have kind of a big, something big and special to kind of go out with. So. Uh, Sure. It's it's a it's a little different than what we would normally do. I mean, it's uh, you know Hammerlock, just like in his DLC from the main game, is, is always a great place to kind of introduce these new weird enemies and kind of like creatures he's researching and stuff. Yeah. yeah so in the in the story for this one here, uh, the uh, the player and the original Vault Hunters were planning on going on a sort of an island vacation, um, and Sir Hammerlock is already here, and of course, something isn't quite what it seems, and uh, we end up having to investigate a problem. Uh, but we're going to keep going through here for a little while. We're going to deal with some of these uh, these natives out here on the island that apparently don't like us very much. Yeah. And uh, see if we can meet up with uh, Sir Hammerlock and figure out what's going on here. I love that, like in the DLCs like this, you walk out and just immediately get into combat too. It's kind of nice that like there's no, you know, waiting for it. Uh, yeah. Well, we have actually one of the things you see here. Uh, these are the craboids. Um, if uh, players remember from the original Borderlands, uh, we had enemies called crabworms. And uh, they were not present at all in Borderlands 2. Um, and so we've actually gone back and we've uh, pulled those back out of the archive, rebuilt them from the ground up to work with all of our new Borderlands 2 AI in combat systems. Uh, so this, uh, you'll see a lot of variants of the Craboids um, here in this DLC. So that's, uh, that's some new content here for Borderlands 2. Oh, very cool. Yeah, it's kind of nice that you guys are able to kind of dip into that, uh, you know, back catalog. Because at this point now, you're going on, God, Nick, I guess several years of, uh, of Borderlands history that you can draw from. Uh, it's, it's quite a lengthy backlog that we have there, yeah. Um, and so are we looking for Hammerlock now? Uh, yeah, we're going to go meet up Hammerlock. He's up here in, this, uh, in the middle of this island resort. Um, so he has, he has a message for us. We're going to go see, uh, see what's kind of going on with him. Yeah, I guess I am getting a better sense of the, the Easter egg color palette now. Actually. Yeah, no, everything is very, everything's very colorful, in. very pastels. Um, so we just wanted a f something fun and sunny. Since the the, uh, the previous DLC uh, for Valentine's Day was very overcast and rainy most of the time, we wanted something that was bright and sunny and fun just to kind of uh, vary, vary things up here. And have you guys been able to kind of get uh, any of sort of the new systems that you built for any of the previous ones to kind of come into play in this one? Um, Systems-wise, there's not really a whole lot. Uh, like the last time we did some new weather stuff, um, we didn't really do any of that here because we're pushing some of the limits rendering-wise just with the level by itself. Um, this is one of the largest uh, Borderlands levels that we've done. This is the largest of the uh, Headhunter packs by far. Uh, so this will be, it's the longest mission, it's the largest level, so there's uh, it's a whole lot of ground to cover here. It's kind of a cool note to go out on too for, uh, for Borderlands too. Yeah, we, we definitely wanted to do something big here, so, as our, our swan song. Oh, here's Hammerlock. <laughs> and he's been through a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, at least he's all in one piece right now. <laughs> so he's going to uh, open the door here, let us into uh, the inner reaches of the island. So it, this is a big tropical resort. You notice that there aren't any people right now. They're sort of on lockdown. Um, there's been some mysterious disappearances from guests and uh, something related to the wildlife here, and Hammerlock has been sort of investigating that. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's going to let us in to the backside of the island. Trouble on Pandora, I just can't imagine. It's I know, it and... just always happens. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> so, uh, Hammerlock's just giving us some backstory here. He's talking about some of the new indigenous creatures. Um, unfortunately, he's not going to last very long. Ooh. So, uh... something just took Hammerlock. Yeah, something just took Hammerlock, indeed. Um, so... Since we don't have Hammerlock here to talk to us, since he was just abducted mysteriously, um, the uh, original Vault Hunters from the main game, those that are still with us, spoilers, um, <laughs> will be here sort of talking us through the rest of this event here. 
So uh, Hammerlock was talking about some of his research. Um, he was trying to track down some of these new creatures that have been showing up. So he has a new technique for tracking um, with uh, what he calls the Bloodhound Barkid. It's a new Barkid that we've created. Um, now Bloodhound Barkids, the same way that you would think of a Bloodhound working, they need the scent of something uh, so that they can track it. So in this case, Hammerlock's been drinking in the outhouse a little bit. So we're taking, we're taking some of his booze uh, and we're actually going to inject it here into a Varkid pod. And uh, the Varkid that hatches out of that pod will then be a uh, pick up a syringe. Uh, will be a, one of these new uh, Bloodhound Varkids. I do respect that you guys got uh, two booze themed uh, DLCs in a row. Oh, sorry, say that again? <laughs> I, I, I respect that you guys got two booze themed DLCs in a row. Yeah, uh, it's. Uh, that makes me happy at least. It, it's very reflective of life on Pandora. <laughs> Yeah, it's been really nice having kind of the uh, the presence of the original Vault Hunters, not only in the main game, but in kind of the, the post content. Yeah. Um, they'll, they'll be here talking to us throughout this entire adventure, so there's, uh, that, there's a lot of fun commentary coming from them, talking about things that they've done in the past versus the things that you're having to do now. So uh, now that we have the injector and that we have the booze from Hammerlock's thing, we're going to fight some Varkids here. These are our new tropical Varkids. They're, also, they're very colorful. Um, they will also, as they grow larger... Uh, there will be elemental variations, which have never appeared in Borderlands before, so we made new Varkids. I'm actually going to try to inject that one. There we go. So the Varkid that hatches out of this one is now a little drunk. <laughs> uh, not unlike our, uh, our drunk Threshers from the Valentine's Day DLC. But in this case, now he's going to start trying to track Sir Hamelok, so we're going to follow him and see where he goes. Um, but again, he's drunk, so he's not entirely clear what he's doing or where he's going. He's a little uh, confused. It is nice to have a Varkin on your side for once. Yeah. So we do have, um, if you remember during the end credits of Borderlands 2, uh, you saw that uh, Mordecai was raising a new bird. Mm -hmm. So you'll hear a little bit about that new bird during this DLC here. Oh, awesome. Uh, he'll make a few appearances via Echo, and uh, you'll learn about how Mordecai has been moving on with his life. That's cool. It's awesome that you guys are able to kind of, you know, put a, a nice bookend on the end of that, especially, you know, after Blood Ring and everything. Sorry, more spoilers for, uh, spoilers. for Borderlands 2 main game. Yeah, well, it's, <laughs> it's been almost two years or a year and a half at this point, so I really hope you've, you've made your way through main game. Um, but if you haven't, I'm so sorry. And these do, you know, all these Headhunter packs are, are meant to scale between, uh, I believe you said starting at level 15? Uh, yeah, starting as low as level 15. So if new players, we want them to have played the game long enough to understand some of the main core systems. Um, is he, what's he doing? Oh, he's throwing up. Oh, he's had a bad day. Maybe we gave him too much of that booze. Oh, actually he just died. We actually just killed that poor Varkid. So Hamelok's booze was a little bit too strong for him. Man. So we'll see if we can find another Varkid and maybe inject a little bit less this time so that he has a better idea. Um, oh, hey, what's this? We have a little egg here. Ooh. Oh. An Easter egg, if you will. If you will, yeah. <laughs> uh, that was sort of the obvious joke to go with here. But, uh, oh, we're going to pot up. Let's inject him. Yeah, and you, you had mentioned uh, colors. these kind of custom uh, kind of chests and, and lootables in each of these. I think it's kind of cool that uh, each of these uh, Headhunter packs has had kind of its own little unique thing. Yeah, we always try to do custom stuff because the lootables are so important to Borderlands. Um, and uh, Just as far as the core game loop. Um, whoops. So I'm not used to talking and playing at the same time. So it's no, actually... no, no worries. <laughs> it, it's uh, it's harder than people would think. Actually. Yeah. Uh oh. oh you I got, got this. I got I got him. I mean, he's a badass, but I'm a little bit bigger. <laughs> <sighs> so our Varkid is just kind of running through here. You can still see the sort of drunk bubbles in the air in front of us here. He's uh, gonna track down Hammerlock for us, hopefully. Oh, somebody's unhappy. Oh. We have more of our anchor men coming through. They don't like us being on, on their island here. <laughs> yeah, the enemy variation is actually really cool here too. Even just color-wise, it's kind of nice seeing them match the palette. Yeah. Well, that was uh, we actually had a lot of fun because, I mean, Borderlands is always colorful, but it's rarely this pastel. Yeah, for um, sure. So we we were like going through and just putting a lot of life into this stuff here. It's from um, the backgrounds too, with like the volcano and like yeah. kind of. So we have lots of ominous looking places that maybe we'll be going to soon. Hmm. 
<clears throat> but still, we're trying to track down this Bloodhound Barkid. Hope he hasn't gotten too far ahead of us. We wouldn't want to lose him. <laughs> If you, I, does he kind of stop and wait after a while? Or just yeah, he, he won't actually leave you behind. Um, he'll go forward a little bit and wait for you to catch up if you aren't there yet. But uh, whew, he certainly seems to be wanting to go somewhere. Hammerlock <laughs> has apparently been taking on quite a journey to <laughs> some underground mess here. So uh, let's see where this market is taking us. Oh, the going native safari. Sorry, we're closed. Oh. This appears to be a dead end. Mm -hmm. So part of the resort over here has been closed, and we're not really sure why it's been closed yet. Um, but we're probably going to have to restore power here so we can get all this up and running, and then maybe we can go down and follow where he went. Whoop. Yeah, it, it kind of has that cool, like, haunted uh, resort feeling to it, actually, <laughs> which is kind of fun. Yeah, it's, uh, there's, there might be something real special in there. We'll, we'll see. Um, but we're going to have to restore some power here. You notice that nothing's actually functional here at the resort. Everything is sort of a, a ghost town at this point, um, since so many guests have disappeared previously. Uh, more ammo, always good. Let's see. This giant water wheel here, that should be able to give us some power. It's always fun seeing how you guys kind of have those environmental clues so that even if it's not directly pointing you to it, you can kind of figure it out after a little bit. Yeah, well, we always have the objectives there to kind of point you in the right direction, but we always try to have big markers in the environment to kind of show you, like, there might be something interesting here. You should come look. Um, and actually, in fact, there are lots of little hidden things that you can find around uh, this DLC. Oh. Oh. It's like a... Crazy Earl doesn't want us coming in there yet. We have to do something for him. Yeah. He finally got out of the sanctuary. Right? <laughs> so yeah, we, we have a, a little part here for Crazy Earl. Uh, he's sort of our gatekeeper for uh, th this backwater area. Um, but he wants us to kind of deal with these pirates that keep coming into shore here, so... We're going to go fight a little fight for him and kind of clear these guys out. I like the idea of pirates kind of carrying over now as part of the kind of canon of, of uh, Borderlands. Just, it's all, it all ties into Borderlands, yeah. Um, so we, we certainly, uh, with all the island stuff, we had a lot of thoughts about what we could do with the island setting. And pirates, obviously, is kind of a good fit for that sort of thing, so... And again, it sort of serves as like a really nice kind of goodbye oh. to, you know, after all this uh, Borderlands 2 DLC, kind of to reference, uh, I believe Cap Scar was the first DLC pack. Uh, yeah, that was the first big DLC for uh, Borderlands 2. Oh, crap, I'm out of ammo. Let's try this one instead. trying to hide. <laughs> there we go. All right, well, we've repelled this little pirate invasion here on the beaches, so now Crazy Earl's gonna let us back into his little secret lair. Get some health there. It is, it's definitely actually more involved than, you know, the even already than some of the other uh, Headhunter missions were. Oh, and we're, we're not even halfway there yet. We still got quite a ways to go. So yeah, this is, this is by far the largest Headhunter adventure yet. Um, so we've only seen uh, this area right here. This is the, the first island. We have three islands um, that you'll be exploring. So oh, it's, well. it's actually, there's a lot going on. It's like in Far Cry 3 when you switch islands. <laughs> it's not quite as big as Far Cry 3. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if we can power up the machines. I'll get the fans going. Here we go. Well, let's get the machinery back in action. Cool. Sounds like that powered up the transit tunnel. Just head through there 
Karen, you should be able to reach your booze sniffing market on the other island. Ooh. So that should uh, do a good job of getting power back to the island. Uh, for players that are looking for Easter eggs, you might find a few other things around the island that uh, require power to operate. So when you first come in, none of that stuff's gonna work. But from this point forward, it actually unlocks a few other secrets that you can go explore and find. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's actually really cool how you guys have done that with, with all the Headhunter packs, is that uh, if you kind of revisit certain areas, uh, you can find stuff, or if you revisit the boss itself, the, the actual, you know, who you get the head from, uh, they kind of have different iterations yeah. the more times you run them. Um, well, this one in particular, actually, the, the runnable version of the boss for this DLC actually is a raid boss, unlike all the other uh, Headhunter packs that we've done. So this one actually, for players that want a real challenge, this has actually got a pretty big, uh, pretty big reason to come back and, and fight for more. It's really cool that you so, guys are adding one more raid boss after you know there were so many. And here's oh, wow. something that we've never seen in Borderlands before. Yeah, wow. So we uh, we added this little underwater walk between uh, both. Uh, oh, something just ran by over there out in the ocean. Um, so we have this this lovely little underwater walkway. Um, we almost had to cut this so many times for, <laughs> for performance and memory reasons, but uh, we worked really hard to keep this little experience here intact. Yeah, this is really cool. And it's, like, again, just so different than anything you see in the main game. It's kind of cool to see like a whole new environment. Yeah. Ooh, crab boys get some, are getting bigger. Some of the bigger crab boys. <laughs> So we got uh, one of our level designers here, Craig uh, Craig Harrison, is that his last name? Um, he built all this stuff underwater here, and it's all beautiful. Um, so we, we fought really hard to be able to, to ship this kind of stuff here. So this is really outside of the bounds of what we would normally do in Borderlands. That's really cool, especially as kind of, again, kind of the, the swan song of DLC for yeah. the game. It's kind of cool to have something, you know, one more big new cool thing. And this serves as a transition from Island 1 to Island 2. Is there then something that we might expect uh, as you go again from 2 to 3? <laughs> well, uh, and we wouldn't want to spoil the surprise. Okay, fair enough. Um, but uh, we're all, we've almost made our way under the ocean to, uh, to the next island here, so we'll be coming back up above ground pretty soon. Oh, wait, that's my friendly bark. <laughs> You know, it's so used to get, uh, or it's so easy to get used to shooting Barkid. Yeah. Oh, geez. Hey, man, don't call me a savage. Oh, you speak English. Oh. I graduated from Eden 4 Mega Versity with honors. Check your privilege. We'll take the elevator back up. <laughs> well, cool. You know, uh, we'll get one quick glimpse at this second island here, but I think that's a pretty good taste of uh -huh. what, uh, the, the early parts of yeah. Under 5 have to we, offer. We, we have our, uh, our going native safari. This is our, our giant King Kong doors. Ooh. So you'll have to see what's on the other side yourself. Awesome and cool. So this comes out, uh, Sir Hammerlock son of, versus the Son of Cromerax. Uh, this is out April 15th, I believe? Uh, yes, that is correct, April 15th. Awesome. Well, this is a really cool way to say goodbye to Borderlands 2. It's uh, awesome to see the last piece of DLC. Uh, for all of your Borderlands needs, keep it locked to IGN. <laughs>